Whoa, that was a lot of golf. Kevin Kisner gets it done and Grab McDowell back in the winner circle. Let's tee it up. Welcome to Data Access Golf, your home for rapid golf improvement. And now, from the thin air of the Rocky Mountains, next on the number one tee, your host, Aaron Stewart. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Data Access Golf, the podcast. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for being here. Thanks for your patience. The, uh, the flood of 2019, I believe, is behind us. We returned to the de- dehumidifier today, and it feels drier in here. I had to actually put lotion on my hands. So that's, that's a big deal. We've dried out and we're thrilled about it. So yeah, great uh, weekend of golf. Hope you enjoyed it. I actually didn't watch much of the Graham McDowell win, um, but I did watch a lot of the match play. So um, congratulations to Graham McDowell. We'll talk a little bit about him. We definitely went through the numbers for his win as well as Kevin Kisner's. So we'll jump right into those numbers and see how they compare to our benchmarks and just kind of see where things kind of shook out. It's always weird when we have a kind of a, I guess they, the Masters calls it a second tier tournament. So Graham winning the tournament got a lot of FedEx Cup, Cup points. He won a two-year exemption, got all, a lot of the goodies, but the one he probably misses out on most is the invitation to the Masters. But I just read he is going to be in the uh, Valero Open, so hopefully maybe he'll he will uh, qualify there. If he, he, I guess there's one spot left in the Masters, and whoever wins there gets it done. So we'll take a look at that. Okay, first what we'd like to do then is jump right in and take a look at what the wins did for our champions as far as their standing in the FedEx Cup, and then look at their consistency numbers, something we do uh, every Monday. So Kevin Kisner started the week at uh, 73rd in the FedEx Cup standings and finishes now up to 13th. Graham McDowell started 119 and now sits at 42. So a couple good jumps there. The FedEx Cup has Graham McDowell a little wrong. It has that he was 38th last week and now he has moved down to 42nd, but that obviously is incorrect. I read in an article that he was at 119 up to 42. This is the part that I found a little bit interesting. So Kevin Kisner has played in 196 PGA Tour events and has made the cut 135 times for a consistency rating of 69%. Graham McDowell, on the other hand, has played in 215 events, so 19 more events, and has made 149 cuts, also 69%. And of all the champions we have back to, let's see, my screen shows all the way back to the Century Tournament of Champions, those two are the lowest consistency numbers of any of our champions to date, and both at 69%. So just an interesting coincidence, perhaps, or something more than that, but I'm saying it's a coincidence. So there you are for them. So up to 42 and to 13th for Kisner and McDowell. As far as their numbers go, um, so because it was a a match play event for Kevin Kisner, they didn't really give us a lot of the standard stats that we look at. So I've basically gathered just all his 2018 stats. And then also for Graham McDowell, there were some, um, there was some strokes, like strokes game putting they didn't keep track of down in Corrales, Putacana. So we're going to skip that as well, but we'll look at these and compare them to our our benchmarks and see how they did. So Kevin Kisner for 2018 averaged, his driving accuracy was 66%. Uh, Graham McDowell's average for 2018 was 65%, so they're very similar. Graham McDowell for this week averaged 73%, so well above his average, Um, obviously played well. In greens and regulation, let's see, no, let's go back to, so our uh, benchmark for Driving accuracy is 55%. So both of them, as far as their tour averages for 2018, and obviously Graham McDowell at 73%, did far better than than the 55%. So tour quality, very good driving numbers for both of those players. Greens and regulation, uh, both players in 2018 averaged 65%. And that is exactly our benchmark, 65% greens and regulation. Uh, So right on the number, they could um, use a little work. Uh, based on what everybody else has done up above them, but that's right on our number. 
uh, for greens and regulation. Graham McDowell averaged 72% though for the tournament. So seven points above his average for the win, which we would, we would expect. Um, so sand saves for 2018. Kevin Kisner is 44%, which is, and Graham McDowell was 47%. We have our benchmark at 45%. So um, Kevin Kisner could use a little work in a sand game. Uh, Graham McDowell for the week averaged 50%. So a little bit above his average. So both in, in driving accuracy, greens and, regulation, greens and regulation, excuse me, and sand saves, Graham McDowell has exceeded his averages for 2018. Uh, their stroke gain numbers are very similar for 2018 as well. Essentially half a stroke per round on the field. Uh, Graham McDowell was 0.48 and Kevin Kisner is 0.51. Scrambling numbers, identical at 60% for 2018. Very interesting. Um, I, I heard in, we're going to get into the putting, into putting next. And it was interesting to me, I, as I was driving into work this morning, I heard uh, on the radio, on, on Sirius XM radio, that, uh, and it was Michael Breed, said that he believes that Graham McDowell has one of the finest putting strokes in all of the PGA Tour. And I had never really heard that. That was, Graham McDowell has never come across to me as a, as a really good putter. I hadn't never really known. But going back and looking at his numbers, I mean, he led the tour in, you know, 2013, 2014 in so many putting categories, it was unbelievable. And I actually was able to find a little video of him on the School of Golf where he talks about his putting stroke. And I wanted to throw this out there since we're going to be talking about putting is Graham McDowell has a, a majority of his weight on his left side when he makes a putting stroke. He feels that gives him the ability to remain stable, have a stable lower body. And he talked a little bit about moving. And I know we've talked about that quite a bit too, that when you're moving in your putting stroke, you're now made, you've now made the ball a moving target, and it's very hard to be consistent putter when you're moving in your putting stroke. So he puts a majority of his weight on his left foot in order to stay stationary, but he does that with a wider stance, uh, which was I thought was super fascinating. I'm definitely going to give it a try and, and see what that does for me as well. I putt with a very narrow stance, but try to stay very stable in the lower body. So definitely give that a try if you feel like you've got some problems. He says that a lot of times in his, um, in his full swing, he gets a little quick with his hips and he notices that he believes that sometimes your full swing weaknesses can leak into your putting stroke. So um, I've heard that before. I believe that is to be the case. So if you have quick hips and sometimes you have uh, your lower body feels like it's moving a little bit in your putting stroke, like you feel a little inconsistent in your putting stroke. I found that to be typically that you're moving during your putting stroke. And maybe this is a good way to combat that, a wider stance and then make sure that a lot of the weight's on your left side. So I thought that was interesting, thought I would pass that along. As we jump into these uh, putting strokes, so both, as far as scrambling, both of them are at 60%, which is above our 55% benchmark for scrambling. So they're good there. So uh, let's see, Kevin Kisner from uh, over 25, uh, 20 to 25 feet makes 15% of his putts and Graham McDowell makes 14%. Our benchmark for that is 10%. So both of them exceed that easily. From 15 to 20 feet, our benchmark is 17%. Kevin Kisner is 18% and Graham McDowell is 21%. So both of them are solid there. Putting from 10 to 15 feet, this was interesting. Kevin Kisner makes 23% and our benchmark is 28%. So Kevin Kisner is a little below what we would consider our benchmark from 10 to 15 feet. And so that would be a place where we would say, uh, ask Kevin Kisner to work on that part of his game a little bit. And if any one of us is below that 28% benchmark, then we would work on 10 to 15 footers as well. Graham McDowell is at 34%, so above the 28% benchmark. And then uh, from five feet, they're both really solid. Um, Kevin Kisner makes 89% of his, of his five footers and Graham McDowell makes 88% of his five footers. Um, our benchmark is 80%. And just to kind of give you an idea, uh, Ian Poulter, John Rahm, and Kevin Na make less than that 80% benchmark. And that's why we've got it set up there. 
So in every one of these benchmarks, there's a, a, a number of really good players that average less than these benchmarks. So these are solid numbers that we can use to analyze our game and make sure that we are playing up to quote unquote tour quality, right, in our game. So, and then the final thing, putts per round, we have our benchmark at 30. Less than 30 putts per round would be something that we would always shoot for. Uh, Kevin Kisner averages 28.9 putts per round, and Graham McDowell averages 29.2 putts per round. So both of them finish up very well in that category, in that benchmark, below the 30 putts per round. Now jumping to the money, the money made over this, uh, uh, over this tournament. First and foremost, that Kevin Kisner is so impressive in that he was in the final match last year against Bubba Watson and lost. And then this year he went the entire way, all seven matches. So if you think about it, right, he is 13 and one in the last two years at the Dell, at the Dell match play, which is right. That's strong. If he is not on the president's cup or on the right, I mean, he should just be a designated. He's like our Ian Poulter. He is amazing in match play. He should be at least considered, um, they call him the bulldog, and he definitely shows it in his play. So what that means is his, um, his total winnings for the last two years at the Dell match play alone is $2.8 million, right? And that $2.8 million is, is, is quite a bit. He made half of his total money last year at the Dell match play. He made just over $2 million. And so far this year, he made 1.7 million for his uh, seven matches last week. So normally we break these numbers out based on their score, the number of strokes for their score, how much they made per day, per hour, per stroke. Obviously being match play, it's gonna be difficult for us to do that. And because we had to add a couple more hours in there because there was more golf, there was seven matches, there was seven rounds of golf or matches instead of just the four. So essentially, we'll just have to look at this. He made one point, we'll have to look at this in just one number. He made $1.7 million for his seven matches, which averaged to $436,000 a day. Okay, and so in the last two years, he's made $2.8 million at the Dell match play. So he's got to love that course, that place, Texas, the whole thing. But it, now if we jump down to um, Graham McDowell, his winner's check was $540,000. Nothing to shake his stick at, but that would have put him, had he played, that amount of money would have put him in fifth place in the Dell match play. So everybody who was in the championship match, uh, Kevin Kisner and Matt Kuchar both made over a million dollars. And then um, Molinari and, boy, Who's the other kid's name? I can't remember the other kid's name. They both made over $450,000 for their efforts. And so, yeah, so $540,000. It took Graham 270 strokes to win that tournament, which meant that he made $135,000 a day, as opposed to Kisner's $436,000 a day. Per hour, that averages out to $27,000 per hour or $2,000 per stroke. Uh, the only person that I have here that's made less than $2,000 per stroke was actually, no, actually right there. So in Puerto Rico, trainer made one uh, $1,978,000 per stroke, right? So there you have it, $2,000 per stroke for, for McDowell, but he does pick up the two-year exemption. He does pick up an invitation to the uh, the British Open, which was very important to him um, back in his hometown, right? So he was looking very forward to that and struggling to make sure he made that. So definitely a feel-good story there that he will be able to play now at home in the British Open. Thank you very little. And that also gets him into the PGA. So very good win for Graham McDowell and an, just an amazing win for Kevin Kisner. To, do, to be in the championship match two years in a row to listen to him talk about what he learned from last year and how he applied it to this year. He talked about not getting too amped up for the championship match and just, uh, you know, going out there and playing some good golf and how that worked out. 
just super impressive win for him. I think match play is super difficult and uh, amazing to have him just consistently sort of work through there and get it done. So there are the numbers that matter and the numbers that got it done. Cold hard data. We have made it through the 2019 flood. Hopefully get back on a more regular schedule here at the Data Access Golf Podcast. So until next time, and we've got a lot to talk about, remember better data always means better golf. Thanks. Thanks for listening to Data Access Golf with Aaron Stewart. Check us out online at dataaccessgolf.com, and we'll see you on the next episode.